All right, I'm sitting here with Mr. Rock and Roll Revolution himself, Johnny D, the beat behind Duro. Welcome, Johnny, Hi. to my basement. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> this is like Wayne's World. Now, it's awesome. So when I was much younger, as you were, I was at your house one time, and you were playing the drums so loud the neighbors couldn't think. Was your family always encouraging to your drumming? And uh, how did the neighbors like the volume? Uh, well, my parents were very patient, encouraging. I don't know if they were encouraging me to do it, but they were, let's say, putting up with it. But they were cool, always uh, welcoming all the various characters into the house, and it was always, hey, did you eat, you know, uh, you want a shot, a coffee, you know, whatever, and, you know, my dad had nicknames for everybody that came in the house, and uh, the neighbors, like I said uh, before, they were, um, we tried the garage, that didn't work, so when we went to the basement, because our house sat back off the street a bit, there was a little bit of space around us, so it wasn't too bad, but yeah, it was pretty loud, um, never had a problem after we moved out of the garage. Did you soundproof it? No, not at all, <laughs> the cement walls, um, actually I had a, a a young kid that was like three houses away that ended up being a drummer as well. I think he was totally into it because he was always like listening, would come over and watch us and stuff. So everybody was pretty cool. Never had any problem. So what were your drumming influences? And is it always the instrument you wanted to play? Did you look and say? <clears throat> well, I started as a singer in like... In, I went to Catholic school, and I was like in the in the glee club and choir in like second, third grade. I was always singing in these shows and stuff like that. And uh, I liked to sing, but once I like found out about rock and roll, it was always the drums. I don't know why. It was more of a you know a visual connection, and it just like. I just was drawn to them for some reason. I would see pictures in magazines and then my sister was, uh, she's like six years older than me and she was so cool. She had all this really good taste in music and she had a great record collection. She would have um, parties in our basement. Once again, my parents were super cool about that. She had her friend's band from high school play uh, in our basement one time and I just remember going down there and they had like all these black lights and posters and these guys were like jamming on Santana and stuff and I was like oh my god this is awesome and I was like staring at the drummer dude let me sit behind his kit afterwards and take some pictures and stuff and it was always just like that unknown kind of connection. Did you have, did you have early influences? Who were your favorite drummers? Uh, well, Ringo, obviously I was really into the Beatles, and, um, and then I started getting into like heavier stuff. I discovered some albums in my sister's collection, like I remember the first, first ones were Killer by Alice Cooper, um, Billion Dollar Babies, and also Machine Head, Deep Purple, and like some of the stuff was just like, whoa, you know, hearing that heavy beat and groove I started to really like get into that so I would say like Neil Smith, Ian Pace um, and then I discovered Kiss and it was all over at that point because then it wasn't just dr a drummer or music it was like holy crap these guys look like you know circus freaks and like it became like a you know a showy kind of uh, entertainment mixed with horror movies well, and Smith comic Neil Smith does book. have longer arms than you. Know, <laughs> oh god, he's an <laughs> octopus, man. So now I guess you, after the Glee Club and you started drumming, you play in a bunch of local bands? Uh, not a lot. The weirdest thing happened to me was uh, I was practicing and playing with a couple close friends of my age that were like either in school with me or uh, had a friend up the street that played guitar and I grew up with and we were just fooling around but we were pretty much learning Kiss songs and stuff like that and nothing real complicated. So one day I get a knock on the door and it was Billy Dagley and some other dude that my sister went to school with. These guys were like five years older than me or whatever and 
we heard you play the drums. And I'm thinking like, yeah, you probably heard it walking down the street, right? <laughs> well, you know, we're looking for a drummer and uh, we want to check you out. And I was like, um, okay. Like, I never didn't know how to, like, audition for a band or anything. I was just a dumb kid trying to be... Uh... Did you read music ever? No, no. I only took lessons for a couple weeks and it was, like, very limited, uh, basic, you know, rudiments on a on a rubber pad in the music store, snare drum stuff, and I was like, this is bullshit, man. I don't want to do this. I want to fucking play rock and roll, you know? So, being the dumbass that I was, I just... <laughs> the teacher never explained to me that, like, you know, well, if you do this and get it down, you'll get to that point. Just chill out, because it just seemed like a never-ending thing for me. So I went down in my basement and started to teach myself. Anyway, those guys came dropped off a stack of albums and it was like Cheap Trick and uh, whatever, I think Rush, there was a Rush album in there and I put dropped the needle on that and I was like, what the hell is this crap, you know, how the fuck am I going to play that? And, um, and that was like the start of me actually like interacting and really learning how to play like, you know, intricate stuff and... Uh, and I was playing with guys that were five, six years older than me and, mm -hmm. like, actually really taught me a lot about, uh, you know, interacting with musicians and, and really, like, playing for real, not just, like, jamming. And, uh, and so that was cool. I thought that was a pretty in integral part of my development, being able to play with older cats that uh, could give you a little more insight to, you know, because they had already done all the whole process. So you're doing that around town. How do you get on Wasted's radar? Oh, man. How that does was... it go from that? Well, it was a little gradual build-up from there. I mean, from the basement, we started playing some gigs around. You know, we went to Jersey, played Dr. Jekyll's as a cover band. Um, and then you just start networking, you know, people see you or you see this guy and be like, wow, that guy's cool and it would be cool to play with him and blah, blah, blah. But it's funny because I started with Billy and like we ended up so many years later coming back to play together. But the Wasted thing, I went from basement to playing in a band with John Carabi and Jimmy Marciano, which was an early version of Fragile. We were, that was the first band I ever did original music with, so that was another stepping stone for me, my personal path, um, and that was cool, that was a great band, and you know, they were doing the kind of big hair and ripped up clothes thing, it was right around the time I saw Cinderella for the first time, so I thought that band had a definite vibe as far as like, okay, these guys write songs and we're like doing it for real, so from there... I went to World War Three, which was another local band for anybody that doesn't Dizzy, know. Right? Dizzy played drums. Dizzy Dean played drums in that band, and uh, they were another great band, kind of before their time. I think a little bit later they would have probably gotten some good record deal to make some real metal because they had like a following in Europe, they were getting write-ups in Kerrang! magazine just like on the basis of a demo tape, you know? Back in that day, it was pretty, you know, there was a lot of demos going around and people writing about the underground metal scene. So that was another, you know, sort of step for me. And then um, then I met Jimmy DeLella one night, who's from Springfield, uh, from uh, Belmont Hills, PA. He was uh, into Kansas and all these other bands that we really dug, like some more prog stuff. He's a great keyboard player. and uh, So we started playing together and trying to work on a band project. And uh, one day I had a Kerrang! magazine that said, Paul Chapman from UFO is looking for a keyboard player that can play guitar and he's living in Florida. And we were both huge UFO fans. And I was like, dude, you have to, you got to answer this ad, you know? And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, oh, wow. Okay, so he writes up his resume. Like, okay, I guess this is how you do it. Resume and a demo tape with some songs you recorded on it. Mails it down to Paul. And he gets a call back. And Paul's like, yeah, mate, looks good, you know? 
I'd love to bring you down for a play and all. And uh, next thing you know, Jimmy's down in Florida playing with the dude from UFO. I was like, this is unbelievable. You know what I mean? And uh, so that process went on for a few months or maybe a year, I don't remember, but he went down there in hopes to do whatever it was Paul was trying to do, get a deal. They opened a couple shows in Florida for like Ted Nugent, Molly Hatchett, stuff like that. And uh, so it dried up. Paul couldn't get arrested in Florida, so he's like, screw it, I'm going to go back to England where my contacts are, people know me from UFO, takes a tape has a couple meetings, runs into Pete Way. Pete says, um, uh, yeah, Paul, need a, need a guitarist for Wasted. And he's like, probably said, like, what's it pay or whatever. And, <laughs> and then, okay, so then Paul ends up joining Wasted, totally scrapping his solo van in Florida. They're all like, you know, eating like ramen noodles, waiting for something to happen. So Paul's in Wasted, they need a keyboard player. He brings Jimmy over. Then they decide to fire their singer, Finn, and Jimmy goes, I saw this guy in New York once in a band called Allied Force or something, and he was a great singer, Danny Vaughn. Do you know his number? No. Okay, how do we get a hold of him? So they're like trying to find Danny through various people. I mean, this is all pre-internet, you know, just like smoke signals, you know, whatever. And, so they get Danny over, and then now Wasted is Danny Vaughn, Jimmy DeLella, Paul Chapman, Pete Way, and I believe uh, Jerry Shirley was playing drums. Now, Jerry didn't want to tour. A lot of fast way there. All right, half of it. And, uh, well, they went through a process. They made a record with Finn before that. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just trying to condense it a little bit. Anyway... Uh, so Wasted, I got on Wasted's radar through Jimmy DeLella, basically, and uh, it's so weird because he got me in Doro as well, but that's a whole other story. All right, let's go to a part two. Okay, what do I do? Shut it off. How? Same button.